Alrighty. Uh, I was firing up uh, my old uh, Profibus uh, communication uh, link here, the CP5711 uh, USB to Profibus. Uh, it's kind of uh, been the, uh, the workhorse for me uh, for the last, I don't know how many years. Um, but it's the, uh, the, the nice one they make and, uh, it's pretty bulletproof. Uh, but one of the things I was thinking about was, you know, the first thing I always do, uh, which may not be, uh, uh, transparent to, uh, someone just picking one up, uh, for the first time is, uh, you know, just selecting it for, uh, use to talk on the Profi bus. So I got it plugged into my USB port, which is obvious to anyone. Uh, I just got a cable with two Profi bus connectors, uh, terminated at both ends. Uh, you can see the first Profi bus tip on how to make up a Profi bus connector if you don't know uh, how to do that properly. Um, and uh, so the, you know the first thing I always do is make sure that that it works. Uh, Profibus uh, is being, you know, slowly displaced by Profinet, uh, so I don't actually dig it out that often anymore. So uh, I'll just show you real quick. Uh, first thing I do is, like always, you go to the PG interface. Um, this, this is in different places now. If it's in Portal or this is just Drive Starter, but uh, for the old uh, Drive Starter or uh, the, the old Step Seven, uh, this is. Kind of the standard place you're probably used to going to. If not, this is where you go to select um, uh, again in uh, Starter or in the uh, old Step 7 uh, to set up how you want to talk to your device. Uh, like I said, I have a CP5711 Profibus. I only have one of them, so it's got a dot one. Uh, I've actually made it active, but the way you make it active is you find it in your list, you select it, highlight it. Um, it's, it's highlighted, it's not super uh, obvious, but go to properties. Um, it'll often come up like this, without the uh, PG, which is German uh, slang program uh, terminal, whatever. It's a PC, right? It's your computer. Uh, uh, by default, I normally just leave it at zero, unless you know you have a a uh, CPU uh, that's already on zero on the network. Um, start off with uh, if you already have a network active and running, you gotta, you know, you gotta pick what speed. Uh, in this case, I just have a drive on it. Uh, nothing else is talking to it, so I can just select a speed. I'm gonna start off at low speed at 1.5 megabaud, um, just to see if I can get things started. And at that, I just tell it it's you know just DP. Uh, that's Profibus DP, just a standard vanilla uh, selection is what you usually start off with. Um, because I don't have another master, there's no PLC or other sort of controlling uh, Profibus master on this line, uh, I got to tell it to be the master, the only master. That way I'll actually uh, set up the timing and tell the slaves at what speed to talk to. Uh, me yet. But if I didn't do that, and I, I'm going to leave it off on purpose, because uh, this is the mistake I make all the time. You'd think I'd be smarter, but I do make it. Let's go to the diagnostics. I hit the little diagnostics here, and you get this nice, convenient little window. I say test, um, and it's probably going to come back not happy. Give it a second here. It's not happy. Okay, no active Profibus MPI network found. Uh, why? Well, because now that I've told it, it that I'm not the only master, it expects another master to actually be setting up the speed of the network. Um, and because there isn't any other, there's no speed been selected. Um, and it, it kind of tells you that right, right here, that the, the active module, you got to click the download says, hey, go back and set yourself as the only master, because probably there isn't one, and that's your problem. Uh, and you can get this, the speeds are way off as well, but I'm 
We know what's wrong. I already said what what I did wrong. I I didn't have that checked. Now we go back here, tell it to test. Now it'll come back and say that you know it's it's okay because basically my computer, okay, is setting in the timing and the timing is set at my selection of 1.5 megabyte. Um, the standard for the highest address is 128. That's the Profi standard. All all this stuff here is all just kind of the Profi standard. Uh, you can do all kinds of neat fancy things that I never do uh, that can affect some of these things. Uh, so that's great. That means the network's okay. Doesn't really mean much more than that, but hey, that's a big start sometimes. Next, I want to go read the slaves. And it's going to go out polling up to 128 and try to find all the slaves that will actually talk. Um, and I'm going to want this to come up because this is something Siemens has never really enhanced, which they should have. The check mark is active station. See, and that's zero because remember, I left myself the PC set at zero. So, of course, obviously, I can see myself. Uh, the drive I have set at is set out at 40, uh, address 41. It's kind of tough to see. See how it's just white? Not grayed out, but just white. Okay, it's saying it's a passive station. So there's a station. It's hard to see. Especially if you were expecting, lots of times you get on network, you start to expect the slaves to start at 3. And you can see them here. And you may overlook the fact that the slaves were given uh, a higher number. The number you pick is arbitrary to your way you want to do things. Uh, but I did want to point that out. That's It can be a little tough to see sometimes, especially de depending on your computer and the lighting. You know, they could really have done something better there. Made it green or something. But anyway, just wanted to point that out. Um, if you never actually use one of these, that there will get you going without having to, you know, read through uh, all the manuals. And sometimes for these simple things, you would just like to be able to get online and get things going. So anyway, that's uh, that's all I got.